Hi, I'm Brad with Orbit. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the anatomy of a valve. We get questions periodically about how a valve works, what goes inside, how to replace valves. These are some of the common questions, and a valve really is simple but can be a little tricky if you're unfamiliar. So we're going to walk through the valve a little bit today. I've pulled this valve out of a pre-assembled manifold, so it's got the unions attached. With these unions, they've got pleats and slots that you can use this swivel union as a wrench. I'm actually just going to remove those just to uh, get those out of my way. We'll set those aside. Take the other one out. And get that out of the way. Okay, the jar top valve <coughs> shouldn't require any tools to remove the uh, lid of the valve, which is where it gets its name, jar top. No screws on the top here. Um, if it does require a tool, you can try channel locks. If channel locks don't fit, you can use a, uh, an oil filter wrench on here if it's too tight. There is a spring under here, so I'm actually going to hold this together and remove this lid. Okay, we'll pull this apart carefully. Now when you're doing this in the ground, obviously this is a little more tricky, but a couple things to look for. Make sure you don't lose your spring when you take the top off. It wants to jump out. Inside of that, You've got the rubber diaphragm right here. One more piece inside of the jar top valve is this black ring that keeps the diaphragm seated right and floating up and down in a straight line. So make sure you have all of these pieces. Additionally, in the lid, which I'm going to set aside, you've got the solenoid here. I'm just going to take that out just so you can see all of the pieces of a valve, how to put it back together to make sure you've got everything in there. Inside of the solenoid, you've got a plunger inside of there. Now these are encapsulated and shouldn't come out, but make sure that when you go to put your solenoid back on, that is still inside of the solenoid, this plunger. That's, uh, your valve will not work without that. It will run continuously. So make sure you've got that. And here we've got our valve body. So most of the common problems with a valve, one of the primary ones is debris inside of the valve. If you get debris in the valve, the valve doesn't function properly. Either it won't shut off or it won't run. What happens when it won't shut off is that you get d debris trapped between this lip and the rubber seat on the bottom side of the diaphragm. So what I recommend to people is that when they get their valve taken apart, even if this is still in the ground, you can take that off while it's still attached to your manifold. Make sure your main water supply is shut off or the water will just come out of this. But when it's still in the ground, still attached to your manifold, <clears throat> go ahead and slowly open your main line just to flush a little bit of water through the valve and uh, flush any debris that may be inside of there out. That'll cure a lot of problems that happen with a valve. After you flush the line out, if you can see visually no, no debris, no cracks, things like that, go ahead and make sure you put this back in the right order. So a bare valve, put in this black ring. The diaphragm goes next with the black rubber seat down. Okay, and to that part, this is where people forget the spring. So don't forget your spring goes in next right in the center of the diaphragm. After that we can put on the lid of the valve and make sure that goes down and then the lid ring. Now I want to show you one more thing before I get that back together. The, the actual lid of the, of the valve. You'll want to make sure there's no debris inside of this little orifice and sometimes if you get a, a seed or something stuck in there I'll go ahead and make sure that that's clear with a paper clip. <clears throat> so make sure there's no debris in there. And then we can go ahead and put that lid back on. We can tighten down our jar top ring here. And then again, make sure the plunger is in there. Seat that and screw that back onto the top of the valve. And your jar top valve is back together. One other thing to remember when installing a valve, make sure the flow arrows that are usually on top of the valve or on the side of the valve, stamped or imprinted, make sure the flow arrows are going the right direction. Um, operation of this valve, you can operate this valve prior to having power connected to the valve by using the bleed screw here. Now I've got a small screwdriver that will work. You can use your fingers as well. You can loosen the bleed screw to activate this valve before your power is connected. Wiring this valve to your timer is very simple. There's no polarity with these wires, which means there's either one of these wires can be the common wire. So take one of these wires and wire it to a common wire, and the other wire goes to a station wire back to one of the numbered stations on your timer. 
Very simple. If you have a grouping of valves, you'll take one wire from each valve and create the common wire with all of those bundled together. And then the separate wires go to the zone stations on your timer. And make sure when you're making these connections, you either use waterproof wire nuts or grease caps over a wire nut to waterproof and secure that connection, keep it corrosion free, keep it working for years. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. For more information and how-to videos, visit us at orbitonline.com.